Powerhouse followers. Today we're going to be creating a crescent moon wreath. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have an 18 inch box wreath frame and what we're going to do is I'm actually going to cut off some sections. So I'm going to cut over here. I think I'm going to cut right here and right here. So a total of three bars and I want to cut up close to the bars on this side. And you're just going to want to take your wire cutters and give it a good, good cut. You're going to have to give it a little oomph here just to get through. If you have metal shears, those should work as well. Okay, so I'm not gonna need this section. I'm just gonna throw that away. So I have a few things. I have both a florist tape and a florist wire, and we are gonna use both of those. Okay, so we're gonna come in with that florist tape, and what we're gonna do is just wrap it right around here. So I wanna make sure I get that lowest point. And then we're gonna wrap around all the metal a few times and all the way to the top. Now this can be a little tricky at times just because obviously the tape and wire both moves. So I do suggest if you're having a hard time, if you could just kind of get the tape going and then what you can do, I'm gonna come in with this florist wire about six inches and I'm just gonna wrap it right around the tape and the wire just kind of giving it a little extra security so I know that that's not gonna pop off and then I'll go ahead and trim my wires down and then I will tape over that so again I'm gonna Circle my tape all the way up and down this. And you could use like a duct tape or masking tape for this. Um, I just like the florist tape because it is green and it kind of blends in with my um, frame, especially when I'm gonna be doing um, moss on top of this. And you wanna make sure you're going far enough down that you're gonna be catching all your wires a good amount. And you wanna make sure you go slightly over the top of all of your wires so that you're gonna have a blunt end and not a sharp end with all of that, uh, with all that wire. So circle back up. And then we're gonna finish it off. Okay, so we'll come in on that other, this other side here. We'll start with our tape again. So again, just squeezing those together. You wanna make sure you're getting your tape below the shortest inside ring of the wire. And you wanna take your tape around a few times and then we can go ahead and add that wire to help secure our frame. I usually kind of, when I say, I go all the way kind of to that top piece um, of wire and then I'll secure my frame with the florist wire. And then I'm coming in about six inches of wire. And what I do is kind of hold the one side and wrap it right at the end of the tape. Okay, so now I'm just gonna kind of twist that wire nice and tight. Now that the wire is secure, we're just gonna go ahead and do the same as we did on the other side. And we are just gonna wrap right back down and over the wire. Keep wrapping. And again, I kind of double wrap over that wire and then I go at least two things of tape over where I wrap the wire 
And then we're gonna go right back up. And then I am gonna finish it off right above the wire. Okay, now another thing is, if you want to make sure that this is extra secure, you could, when you're ending your um, tape, put a little hot glue. And then you could also put a little hot glue right where it starts, where the tape starts and meets the wire. Just going to make sure you have a little extra security. Now to create the rest of our mold, um, there's a few things that you can do. So we can come through with the wire and zigzag all the way across, back and forth, all the way around the mold. Um, so that I have an area to glue the moss. But since I am hanging this, since I'm hanging this on my wall, if I do this with um, burlap all the way, wrap this frame all the way around, I'm gonna have a nice soft backing so I don't have to worry about the metal up against my wall possibly scratching it. So I'm gonna wrap with burlap. You could do this with um, jute rope as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by putting a thing of hot glue right over that tape. And I am gonna put my end of my jute rope right over it. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slowly wrap the jute rope all the way around. And as I go, I'm gonna put a little bit of hot glue. And I'm trying to make sure I get this as tight as I can as I go around. Just getting the burlap at the end, just enough to overlap so I can hot glue it. So I'm gonna cut it here. So cause uh, this is a circle, I'm gonna have to cut this in a few different places. So I'm gonna cut this right here. I'm gonna start again with a flat side. I'm gonna flip this over and we're gonna hot glue it right off the edges again. Okay. So cutting the burlap and starting over, it's gonna help us so I can cover all the space um, without having to come through and have some patches. So if you don't mind the patches, you can go ahead and just keep on wrapping, but I'm gonna make sure this is all covered. And again, just putting hot glue right on the corners as it wraps around the frame. If you were afraid that it wasn't getting enough glue, I could put hot glue in the corner, both corners. So it'll be secure in both areas, but should it be okay with just the one corner? And I'm just gonna continue on down the way. Okay, so now that I have that fully wrapped around, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this back side. 
I'm gonna cut it as close as I can. And then what I'm gonna do is put some hot glue and I'm just gonna push him right, right along. Now it is gonna be hot, that extra piece of burlap I just cut off and just kind of use it to help push down that end. Cause I don't wanna burn my fingers. Okay, so now is the part that we're gonna cover this up with moss. So I have a few different bags because I wanna have some different colors. So I have our five moss here. I have a nice chartreuse moss. And then I have this Spanish moss, which I'm gonna use to cover most of it. And then we're gonna put all the fun colors down. Now I also have some succulents that I have laying around the house. And I'm thinking I might add some crystals or maybe some agate slices. So we'll see. So let's get that Spanish moss out. So I'm just gonna put that bad boy right in the middle and kind of pull off some chunks. And what I'm gonna do is, let's kind of move this just a little. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put some hot glue down, pull some little sections and just glue it right down. You don't need very much moss. And I could always trim up some of the moss if I need to later on. So if you want it to be pretty dense with the moss, I do suggest kind of balling it up and attaching it to the hot glue because it's going to catch more ends and it's going to be less that comes off when we lift this up. Okay, so kind of condense all the moss together. Glue some here. And again, I'm just going to kind of do it in some patches first. And then I'll go from there and see where I want to add more or less. Um, or if I want to come in with just the bright colors. So again, not really big pieces of moss, just a reminder. Kind of putting it in patches. And Again, I'm not making it super puffy, so um, if I'm wanting this really big, I could be gluing moss on the inside, which maybe I'll go ahead and do that once I um, got everything laid out. But we will, we'll see what it looks like and what vibe we're going for. So just gluing all the moss. I'm gonna really get this corner all covered up. And see how I kind of have that hanging over? So that's where I can come in on that edge and just tuck that moss right on that hot glue. I'll probably do the same thing over here. Looks like I might have to add a little bit. Okay, and I am going to just keep adding. I think I'm going to cover a little bit more in these areas. And then I'm going to add that brighter color mosses as more of an accent. Okay, so we're going to put a chunk of glue there, or chunk of glue there to bring in the moss. And then let's cover this all up. And I'm gonna come in with a good amount there. Now I gotta kinda make sure I get some hot glue on that outside so that moss isn't falling off. I don't know, maybe I should cover it all. I think I am just gonna cover up all the holes, you guys. Cause I think that other moss all the bright colors will end up adding a whole nother dimension when I put it on and give some depth 
And then I could tuck them on the sides a little bit more. I think that would look really fun. So just putting all that hot glue down. Coming in with another little section there. Now, if you're having a hard time pulling the moss apart, you could use scissors on these, which is really nice. Um, but so far I haven't had any problems just ripping the moss. Okay, so I got a few more areas. I'm gonna cover here. Now, if you are afraid of burning yourself, you could get a dual temp um, hot glue gun. So at least putting that hot glue on a lower temperature, you should not burn yourself or at least it won't be as hot as um, having it on a high temp. But I do tend to like the high temp just a little bit more. It's just a preference. There's no reason as to why I like it more. Okay, and I have one more spot here. I'm gonna get in there. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna get all of the other moss out of here so I can see what we have. So when I lift it up, it's gonna everything's gonna kind of come down and fall. You're gonna see which pieces aren't really connected here. So I can come in with some more hot glue and kind of attach it. Um, or I could go ahead and trim things up. So if I'm like, I don't like the way this looks here, I want this to be a little bit cleaner, I can just come through and trim it up. This seems a little loose here, so I'm gonna come in with some hot glue. And this is loose, so I'm just gonna put a little hot glue there. Okay, so for the most part, I love how it looks right now. And so now I can come in and add my colored moss and I can add my textured moss and my succulent. So let's open these bags up. Okay, and I am also, I don't want the wire on these, so I'm gonna come in with my wire cutters and just snip the succulents away from the stem. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay my succulents down first and my crystals and then lay the moss down where I want. I think it'd be kind of fun to have some crystals coming out of here. Kind of. Maybe a few other, thinking three up there and the one down here. Okay, I like the way that looks. Maybe I'll have this one elsewhere. Okay, I think I actually don't like this one here. So I'm just gonna glue those ones up there and then I'm gonna attach an agate slice to come down. So let's see where we want our moss. I think it'd be fun to kind of tuck it off to pop these guys. Okay. And I'm just gonna put that chartreuse colored moss kind of throughout this piece. I might kind of do it so maybe that they're setting in there a little bit more so you can see the color. Ooh, I like that. Okay, let's add some of this texture. And again, you can pull this all apart. Okay, I think I need a little bit more texture up here. Let's see what I can snag. Okay, I love the way this is looking, you guys. And I think what I'll do is I'll probably glue some of this on the outside just to kind of make this a little bit more full and colorful. Okay, 
So now I'm just gonna come in with the hot glue and put down all those pieces where I placed them. So I can either put the hot glue right on the moss and push down, or I can put it on the wreath on the moss. Just comes down to a preference. And I'm gonna start at the very end and work my way up. This is also a great time to, when you're filling your um, extra moss in, kind of look for any of those areas where you can see that wreath and just kind of put that extra moss, cover the holes. Okay, so now I'm gonna glue down my succulent. I'm gonna glue my succulents down and then I'll come in and glue my crystals. Okay, glue the succulent. We're gonna glue this moss. I think that went right there. Put some hot glue. Okay. I wanna make sure those are getting nice and secure so I can kinda come in with that um, hot glue gun, make sure it's connecting to that moss. If I'm afraid it's not connecting, I can kind of come in with another chunk of moss and just really secure it. And I can do that with either the fun colorful ones or I can do that with that Spanish moss. So I'm gonna put some hot glue right on there. I'm gonna come up underneath here and just secure him. Cause I don't want him to be flopping around on me or falling off. Okay, so I think I'm going to come in with some more moss on this side. Okay, because these are much heavier than um, the moss, right? So you, you want to make sure you have enough secure to the base and moss that's going to kind of hold these up when they're hanging on the wall. Okay, let's see, that feels pretty secure. I'm gonna come in on this part right here with some hot glue and moss. And now we're gonna secure this guy a little bit more. I really try to use that Spanish moss, making sure it's connecting to the base. If I have to, I can just squeeze the glue right onto the wreath and just really secure it. I'm just pushing with my fingers. I'm gonna put some colored moss right here. And then we still need a little bit of support here. So I'm gonna come in with, again, I'm not being shy with that hot glue. Okay, these feel pretty secure. This one needs a little bit more love right here, so I'm gonna come in with that colored moss. Just kind of lift the succulent up and tuck it. Tuck the moss right below it. And then what I like to do is make sure I have hot glue on top of that moss I just squeezed in and making sure it's securing to that moss. So I'm just gonna attach these few more pieces up here and then we're gonna come in with our crystals. So I'm just gonna, again, not being afraid of how much hot glue I put on there and tuck them in their homes. Oh my gosh, I'm loving how this is looking. And it's nice when you tuck that brighter uh, moss in here because you can really see that my crystals are now popping much more than they were when we got started on gluing these down. And we're going to come up, keep continuing. I'm going to put my hot glue right on that amethyst piece. I'm going to kind of 
spread this out a little bit. So I'm going to put hot glue on both parts. Let's rip this up. Spread this out a little bit. Okay, hot glue. And then we're going to put that amethyst piece right on top of that bright moss. I just think it slightly pops it a little bit more. And then we're going to come in with some more of that brighter moss. Come in with this. Okay, and then I'm gonna really put the hot glue down there and put this colored chartreuse color down. And then I'm gonna put that amethyst piece right on top of it. Okay, and then we're gonna cover this corner because we're gonna come in with this good sized chunk of moss. So there are a few areas right here. I just want to add some of that Spanish moss, kind of cover up my bits I have showing for that frame. Boom. All right, so we have our agate slice here and we are gonna go and attach this in the simplest way that I can think of. So I'm gonna set that guy down and then I have this glue on bail. So it's gonna have a loop that we can take some stringing cord through, and then we can put some E6000 right on this guy and let our agate slice uh, dry. So we're gonna go ahead and so we're gonna go ahead and bring that E6000 in, and we're just gonna go ahead and put a dab of it right in that little textured spot. And then you just want to line up your agate slice wherever you would like. And then I tend to set it upside down since these tend to be thick enough. Um, and then I just want to let that dry for 24 hours and then we will attach it to our wreath. Okay, so we are wanting to attach an agate slice and kind of have it hanging down. So there's a few ways we can do this, but I'm going to show the simplest way for everybody. And I have this glue on bail. So it's going to have a loop that we can take some stringing cord through and then we can put some E6000 right on this guy and let our agate slice uh, dry. So we're going to go ahead and bring that E6000 in. And we're just going to go ahead and put a dab of it right in that little textured spot. And then you just want to line up your agate slice wherever you would like. And then I tend to set it upside down since these tend to be thick enough. Um, and then I just want to let that dry for 24 hours and then we will attach it to our wreath. Okay, now that our agate slice is all dried, I'm going to come in with this elastic cord and I have some large hole amethyst beads kind of go with the purple that I have already. And what I'm gonna do is kind of figure out how far down I want this agate slice to hang. So I'm thinking about right here. And then what I wanna do is fold that string on top of itself and then give myself a few more inches to tie a knot. What I'm gonna do is put the string through the bale and then I am going to string both of these. I'm going to take both ends of the string and put them through the beads. Now I'm going to string beads all the way up to the top of this or the bottom of that wreath. And then we will tie the string around the wreath. Okay, we are done stringing. Now I do want to point out, elasticity is just the easiest one. Um, there's other stringing material that's going to work really great for this. 
elasticity I just know a lot more people can use for making a stretchy bracelet whether that's for themselves or with their kids and it's probably the easiest starting out cording to work with um so that is why I'm referencing it here because this might not be a beater who is falling along on this video so I again took large hole beads that are strung all the way across where I need it and then what I'm gonna do is I am gonna lift this up and make sure I secure this where I want it. Okay, I want it about there. And I'm gonna flip this over. And we are gonna secure the knot on the back side. The reason I also like this elasticity is it's going to uh, be clear, so you're not gonna see it on the front side. So to tie this, it's gonna be really simple. You wanna cross your left over your right and loop that around twice, and then just pull down and secure, and you're gonna repeat that. So left over right and rotate over twice. And then what I do is probably glue that um, to make sure it does not move on me. I mean, I probably put some right here, hot glue, and some right there. I'm gonna snip off the ends. I'm gonna snip off the ends of the cording. We're gonna flip this over. Make sure our cord is hidden. If it isn't hidden, I could go ahead and put a little bit more hot glue, but we are nice and covered. So we wanna make a hanger for this so that I can hang it on the wall. Um, depending on where I'm hanging it, I could possibly um, just make a hole and then I can hook on the wire under here, which is probably what I would do. Now, if I didn't wanna do that, I wanna make sure I have something sturdy enough so that this isn't falling, especially like my succulents I put on here are kind of hefty. So what I would probably do is take jute rope and tie it around um, and on that front side and make sure that I glue any, um, and then make sure if this was tied in that I was covering this with some moss so it wasn't visible, um, but I don't want this piece to have any hanger, so I'm gonna make that hole just big enough for that nail to go ahead and catch on the back side. So I don't want that, so I am gonna go ahead and come in with my scissors and just kind of cut a little, a little something, making sure I'm not cutting through my cord for my agate slice and now I'll be able to hook this right on my nail.